Well, we wanted, you know, to integrate um, the fantasy with real life. And, you know, when you're describing the movie, you sort of say we're two kids become fast friends and create a world away from their world where they can uh, battle their demons of real life. And that's pretty much it. I could have said that better, but I think you got what I'm saying. You know, that they, yeah. they, 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 they dealt with their challenges of real life in their fantasy world of Terabithia. Mm -hmm. So we wanted, you know, you always got to be careful about violence, right? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, in the book, um, Jesse actually punches Maybell like as hard as he could in the book. And we decided mm -hmm. that we couldn't do that. We just, mm -hmm. you know, for him to hit a child that small, it takes the audience out of the moment. And mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is shock an audience to the point where they're going to be thinking about it for the next 30 minutes. Like, I can't believe he hit that hit her, you know, yeah. as opposed to he pushes her down very hard, which is cruel and it hurts her feelings. And it's just the same effect. So you always want to make sure that um, your effect is not over an over effect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that goes just on um, a side note, you know, a lot of young writers use swear words left and right to uh for their to show when their characters are angry but you know the f word you know if you use it 37 times even that it's sort of like you know you're hitting someone with a dead fish it's like come on already stop it you know i understand but you know i think to be honest it's it's a cheating version of writing if all all you can say is the f word to get someone angry like be a little more creative to show that anger um because tarantino i have a lot of examples yes does he use the f word a lot yes but the words before it and after are brilliant. You know, he really mm -hmm. has some great dialogue. And so, um, you know, he peppers his his things with the F word as opposed to make it all about that. But again, going back to Bridge, you know, we wanted him. He he wanted to defeat um, Scott Hoger with the powers that he gained from Leslie. And so we thought the way of using his, his armor to do that made a lot of sense um she still probably was a pretty good punch <laughs> you know yeah. even without the armor but uh you know and so we wanted the, the the fantastical and fantasy elements obviously to to come in and out of um from their imaginary world to the real world but only in their minds too only they saw it you know no no one saw this giant you know armored thing and and it was always important that we keep that when the squogers are jumping on them in the um in terabithia you never actually see them on the kid's chest you see them jump at the kids and you see the kids fall because the whole idea is they're imagining it the, all this is not really there this is their imaginal imaginative world um an interesting thing is disney really wanted to put so much more uh, fantastical elements you know harry potter-esque elements into this movie um the one thing that saved us was the budget they just didn't have the budget to do it um so they just said all right we're gonna have to keep the special effects to a minimum because we don't have that much money this movie was shot for 28 million and a lot of people think oh that's a lot of money not for a film of this level um if we'd shot this in the united states it probably would have cost about 100 million to make um so that's the whole reason we went halfway around the world uh, to shoot New Zealand because we were using Weta, which was um, the all the um, Tolkien Lord of the Rings. We were using all their special effects people because they were in the process of making those. So they were basically on the weekends to like, okay, we can do the special effects for British Terabithia. Yeah. And, you know, we we're also using a lot of their crews, but most importantly, they were non-union crews. So when you're shooting in the U.S., you're paying top dollars for the crew. Over there, you're not paying top dollar for the crew and you're not paying top dollar for the extras where again in the states they cost a lot so that's why you see a lot of movies being shot in other countries i think wednesday if you're familiar with that mm. series yeah. that's shot in romania okay <laughs> so if you think about it why romania it's because romania is throwing money at them to shoot it there and non-union you only have to cover 
the top actors. The rest are not union. And that's the way to save money and make a series. Yeah. And don't yeah. forget about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It was shot in Germany. Yes, I, that's right. It was shot in Germany. So, and, and a lot of the people were dubbed, I think. That actually in Bruce Terabithia, I mentioned, we only brought over about six or seven children uh, from the States. And the rest were from New Zealand. And a couple of the kids couldn't do the American accents. So in the end, we redubbed them in the United States in post with American kid accents. So, you know, some of these kids, when you see them talking, I mean, they did a good job dubbing, but literally some of those kids are using American accents and it's not even their own voices. So, you know, but again, that cost was nominal compared to, you know, bringing over a ton more kids to, to shoot there. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. What was the strategy you used for bringing awareness of bullying? Because bullying is scattered throughout the entire book and movie. Well, the, the great thing that when you're adapting a book that's so well known is it already has an audience, you know, that, you know, Bruce Terabithia uh, is one of the most taught books in schools throughout the United States. And uh, it's also, interestingly enough, one of the most banned books in the United States um, because the character Leslie questions the existence of God. A lot of people have said this kid's imaginary world it, it it borders on witchcraft, which certain parts of the United States, uh, they don't like that. <laughs> and um, so, you know, the bullying element was definitely a part of the, the publicity elements when they were reaching out to schools, you know, and, you know, that, that was in a lot of the PR and that was stressed uh, in the outreach to schools and the um, secret school screenings that they did for teachers and such to, to spread the word. Um, one of the best publicists were the teachers that were shown early screenings to reach out and, and tell people about it because um, many people who saw the previews initially didn't want to go see it because they're like, I don't remember a single of that one of those scenes in the book. And it's because they weren't. <laughs> but as a producer, I, I soon learned that if, Every single person who read the book went to the movie, uh, we would have lost a lot of money. It really was a matter of getting people who had never read the book to come see it. And even though maybe in the first week we lost a sizable audience of um, people who read the book, because they're like, I'm not going to see that. Once the reviews came out, the reviewer said, this is very close to the book. Even though they say, don't pay attention to the, to the previews that you see. It's, it's actually like the book. And so then the second and third weeks, we, we did even better. Um, so the idea was to, uh, I guess, trick. I guess that's what tra trailers usually do is trick people into the movie theaters. And then they go, the, the trailer was better than the movie. They complained about it. But in this case, they said, you know, actually, it's a pretty good movie. It's nothing like the trailer. Um, so yeah, it was a risk, but it was and a gamble, but it, it paid off. That's really cool, man. So, uh, what was the story with Janice about, and about how she would, you know, prevent people from using the restroom? Well, um, my mother, um, when she was writing the book, she had based that character on a character who used to rough up her her grade school when she was in fourth or fifth grade i forget what the girl's name i think it was patty something but <clears throat> she was just bullying everyone and um when my mother was writing the book she figured what would make this girl so angry um to do something like this and usually bullies are bullied by someone else and so although she didn't know what this girl in real life was she she saw it justifiable as she had a really bad home life and the only way she could her, express her frustration from that was picking on other kids. But the bathroom thing, I think I give my mother full credit for that. She came up with that. Um, the free the pee thing, that, would, that, that developed in the movie. There was no free the pee, I think, in the book. But that's where we came up with that in the, in the movie. I remember watching the movie recently in advance of this. And I, I forgot totally about the pee for free thing and whatever and i just when it finally when that scene came up on my television i just remember being like <laughs> trying not to laugh 
Yeah, yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute. <laughs>